The Private Lives of Ethel and Albert, starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. The small trivial things that happen in the routine of everyday life are familiar to every household and every family. And it's these small things, these bright spots in the daily routine, that make up the private lives of Ethel and Albert. We'll join Ethel and Albert in just a moment. Today, the fact must be squarely faced that racial and religious prejudice does exist in our country and that it threatens to lower our international prestige as well as hamper our post-war production. Yes, and what makes the danger of group prejudice especially acute at the present time is that many real problems now confront the American people. Problems of housing, of job openings for returning veterans, of strikes, shortages, and the rising cost of living. Everyone is naturally seeking the causes and cures for their own troubles. And just as happened so successfully in Nazi Germany, it would be an opportune moment for the scapegoat technique to be applied by some power-crazed individuals. You know, that's the method of blaming our national or our personal ailments on some minority group. They would find support among those who, in contempt of what our nation stands for, would fall for prejudice appeals. Now, this sort of activity definitely weakens America. It puts America in a bad light as far as international relations go, and it hinders production and reconversion at home. We must all help fight intolerance of groups other than our own by refusing to hear talk antagonistic toward them and by not spreading their type of talk. In addition, work in your community, at church, at business, or at school, to promote the principles of racial and religious freedom that America was built upon. And now... The Private Lives of Ethel and Albert. It's dinner time in the Arbuckle household. We find Albert just coming up the front walk. I'm absolutely going crazy. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to put him. And I thought, come on, come but on, come who? on. Come on upstairs, will you? Well, I'm come coming, on upstairs, but what? Dear. It's getting to be like a movie. What has happened? Come on, come well, on, come I'm... on. Well, what exactly is going on? Would you mind, really? Well, we've got a problem, I'll tell you. Well, hello, pumpkins. Well, hello. Teddy, Teddy, come here. Come here, Teddy. Be quiet now, be quiet. Well, well hold on. Where's my baby? How's my Susie, huh? What are you all doing locked up here in the bedroom? Susie, calm down now. Susie, now Susie, just calm come down. Come here, come here, honey. Come on, sit on Daddy's lap, yeah. Teddy, come here. Everybody going crazy around here? Come Teddy, on, come I quit here. out with it, will you? Well, I'll tell you what happened. All right, Susie, all right. No, dear, I can't understand you, and I want to hear what your mother's got to say. Now, be quiet. Shh. Well, it happened just before you got home about an hour ago, and I've just been going wild. Yeah? I called your office, and Miss Whittaker said you'd gone, and then you didn't get home and didn't get well, home. Well, I had to go around to the printers. <laughs> well, I didn't know what to do, so I just got Teddy in the house and locked the doors. I thought if the police rang the doorbell or anything that I just wouldn't answer. I don't think they can break in a place, do you? Police? Well, she said she was going to call them or she had called Who? them. Mrs. Spritterbuck. What's eating her? Teddy. What? She called up all excited and said that Teddy bit her. Oh, for the love of my... <laughs> she said Teddy bitter? Well, it isn't anything to laugh about. Teddy? Yes, she said he bitter, and she called up, and she was all excited, and I couldn't believe my ears. Well, for Pete's sake, Teddy wouldn't bite anybody, let alone... That's what I told her, and she said he definitely bitter, and naturally I got scared, and I said, well, are you hurt badly? And she said he broke the skin, and her ankle was bleeding, and she could prove it to the police because there was the evidence right there. Oh, she that said. old troublemaker for Pete's sake. Makes me just sick. You know how oh, good Teddy is. Blood. He wouldn't bite anybody, and he is so good. No, just, no, no. Well, it just... Oh, Ethel, will you stop weeping? You'll have Susie starting now, for God's sake. Oh, Susie, you little mocking Yeah, but why on earth? Why did Teddy bite her? He didn't bite her. You know he wouldn't bite anybody. All right, or why did he allegedly bite her? She didn't say. She said she was working in her garden. 
when suddenly she turned around and there Teddy was growling at her, and she was so frightened, and before she could scream for help, scream for help, honestly, Teddy had rushed upon her and bitten her ankle. Oh, God. Well, that's what she said, and furthermore, she said, <laughs> furthermore, you know, look, she said Teddy was a dangerous, vicious animal to have around a neighborhood, and that she considered it her duty to report him to the police before he killed somebody. <laughs> she must have been kidding. She was not kidding, Elvis. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Teddy. Well, I guess isn't anybody in this neighborhood who doesn't know that Teddy is scared of his own shadow. Well, you know what a coward Teddy is. Now, Albert, maybe well, he's not awfully bright, but he's awfully oh. sweet and good. If anybody even looks cross at Teddy, he runs six blocks. Well, I told Mrs. Britt about all that, and she said he was probably ill. He might have whatever dogs have when they run around biting people. Teddy, come here, come here. Come on, come on. Now, look. Would you look, look at that tail. You've been over biting Mrs. Spritterbuck, have you? <laughs> look at that tail wagging. If the truth of the matter were, you know, you were known, it was probably Mrs. Spritterbuck who bit Teddy. We have got to do something. This is not a laughing matter, Albert. I'm afraid she's called the police. They may be here. Do you think... That... Think what, dear? I just could have to get rid of Teddy. I know he is an awfully bright, but he's a sweet dog, and he's just... Listen, will you? Nothing has happened yet, and Teddy looks as healthy and as lazy as ever. I, I still don't understand why you're hiding here in the bedroom. Well, I thought they might come and take Teddy. Well, darling, if they're going to come and take Teddy, they'll take him whether he's in the living room or up here in the bedroom, and hiding like this would certainly convince them that Teddy was guilty. Oh, yes, I suppose it was. I was so rattled, I couldn't even think. Well, what are we going to do? Well... We can't just ignore it now, honey. If anything is wrong with Teddy, we've got to find out about oh, it. Oh, look at him. He's perfectly normal. You I know, know dear. I know. That. But with Susie, we can't afford to take chances. And other children around the neighborhood, too. Now, I don't know what the first thing Let's to do, Let's get but... downstairs. If the police do come, I don't want them to think we, we think Teddy is guilty. I think we'd better act as though nothing had happened. Honey, we yeah. cannot act as though nothing has happened. If you have a dog that's bitten somebody, you've got to look into it. Teddy wouldn't bite anybody. He won't even chew his meat unless we cut it up for him. You know how he is. Well, come on. Come on. Let's get downstairs. That's the first move. Come on, Susie. Yeah, you too, Teddy. Come on. Come on. I did think that perhaps just to be on the safe side, we could call the dog hospital out here and take Teddy out. It's been a long time since he had a checkup. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's good. Come on. Come on, Teddy. I mean, just sort of routine things, you know. Yeah, I know. Blood count, get his chest x-rayed and... <laughs> Oh, silly, you know what I mean, anyhow. <laughs> I think Come what I'd better do first is call Mrs. Spritterbach. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Well, yeah, all right, might dear. as well do it. What's her number, do you know? I don't know. Oh, well, look it up, will you, honey? Oh, Hurry dear, up. Oh, dear, just a minute. There. Where's the phone book here? It is S. Yeah. Oh, S, 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 P, S, P. Oh, operator, wait just a minute, please. I'm sorry. Geneva, 8845. Look, here it is. Operator, 8845, Geneva. Yes. That's right, thank you. I really you. don't understand it. I was so mad at her when she called. Oh, I was nice, but I certainly told her that Teddy's not a biting dog. Now, if it'd been that Kendall dog, I wouldn't put anything past that dog. I'm scared of him myself. Oh, honey, that dog's all right. He just looks vicious. As a matter of fact, I he's a very good-natured dog. Hello? Oh, Mrs. Spritterbach? Oh, this is Albert Arbuckle. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand that... Yes. He... he... Well, no, we've never had any complaints before. I see. I see. And I understand that you've called the police and complained. Oh, I see. I, I, I see. She hasn't called him yet. She hasn't. Well, uh, you didn't by any chance throw anything at Teddy, did you, <laughs> Mrs. Spritterbach? Uh-huh. He just attacked you. Uh-huh. For no reason. Mm -hmm. Sneaked up on you. I see. Oh, sneaked up on her. Well, well now, silly. under the circumstances, I feel that you're perfectly right, Mrs. Spritterbach. Call the police by all means. You do whatever you want. We're going to have Teddy examined, and now you understand that we'll fight this thing. We really can't afford it, but if it comes to a court case, I feel sure that court we'll case, win, Albert. and court we are case. prepared to fight. I want you to know that. Teddy means a lot to us, and, and of course, if you lose, you know that you'll pay for the court costs. And my wife and I have discussed it, and... Oh, no, 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 indeed. I just want you to know the facts. I'm not trying to intimidate you. I just felt... Hello? Hello? Did she hang up? Yeah. Well, but what was all, all that about going to court? <laughs> Honestly, honey, now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Stop worrying. <laughs> Stop worrying. There's more to this than meets the eye. Why didn't she call the police? She told you she was going to. 
Well, I mean, I'm just talking. She doesn't want to make a big fuss. That I tell you what, I'm going out and browse around the neighborhood and see if anybody saw this happen. In the meantime, honey, how about rasting me up a little dinner, huh? Dinner? Oh, yes, you dinner, yes. As a matter of fact, I have a pork roast in the oven. I better go look at it, too. Okay, that'll be fine. Look, I'll be back in a little while, honey. No, 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 no Teddy. No, now, you stay there, you Daddy, be back. man eater. Come on, dear. I think I'll call the dog hospital in any case and make an appointment for Teddy. All right, honey. Oh, dear, life gets so complicated. Please be quiet. Mommy can't hear now. Daddy. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. A uh, canine clinic. Uh, Dr. Kramer. Uh, this is Mrs. Albert Arbuckle. I was wondering if I could bring Teddy out for a checkup or whatever you call it. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, are you all filled up or should I reserve a box for him? All right. Stop worrying. <laughs> he didn't mm-hmm. bite her. Hold on. Uh, just a minute. What? Everything what? is okay. Who are you talking to? I was making an appointment for Teddy. Uh, hello. Yes, Dr. Kramer. Uh, listen, I'll call you back a little later. Uh, goodbye. What do you mean he didn't bite Mrs. Spritterbuck? Mrs. Fraley was in her garden and she saw the whole thing. She says Teddy wasn't even on Mrs. Spritterbuck's property, but she was afraid he was going to run in her flower bed. Uh, so she yelled at him and he barked, and then she sort of kicked him. Kicked? She kicked Teddy? Well, we ought to call the police. Isn't there a fine against cruelty no, to animals? No, 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 no. Let me finish. She didn't get excited. She sort of kicked at him and yes. lost her balance and fell and apparently scraped her ankle. And that is how it all happened. Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, why do you suppose she called me and started to make trouble? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. What does she do now that Mr. Spritterbox is dead? She just lives there, keeps house for herself. Come to think of it, not many people come to see her either. I don't believe she has any relatives. Sister in California or something. Uh-huh. She's an old fuss budget, though. She complains about everybody in the neighborhood. Bad. Little Mary Burke picked a daisy one day, and I wish you could have heard the fuss Mrs. Spritterbox raised. Yeah, uh-huh. What? Well, you know, maybe we haven't been as neighborly as we might have been. No. No, I guess we haven't, dear. Maybe she's been lonesome. I guess nobody's paid much attention to her. <laughs> you think... You, you thinking what I'm thinking? Huh? I guess I we've been married so long we read each other's minds, honey. <laughs> All <laughs> right, there's enough for there dinner. I have a work. large pork roast. Shall I call her up? No, I'm going over there and get her. Well, maybe she won't come. When I turn on the old Arbuckle charm, say... Listen, by the time Mrs. Spritterbuck has been over here for a nice dinner, she'll be sitting around afterwards holding Teddy on her lap. Maybe <laughs> I'll too, bet she will at that, honey. <laughs> All right, honey, you go and get Well, it seems that Teddy has done his good deed for today. Say, if you were asked to name America's foremost pianist as far as popular music is concerned, chances are you'd reply, Eddie Duchin. Before the war, his popularity was overwhelming. And since his wartime hitch in the Navy, during which he participated in three invasions, he's again ascending the heights of public acclaim. If you'd like a sample of some of that Duchin artistry at the keyboard, listen to his sparkling new musical show on the air over most of these ABC stations every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoon. Not only will you hear his brilliant talents, which have won for him the admiration of Sergei Rachmaninoff, but also his personal charm as he exchanges patter with a rising young songstress. You see, each week, Eddie selects a gal singer he thinks will go far in show business and presents her as a guest star on each of the week's programs, giving her an opportunity to display her singing wares to a vast radio audience. Yes, Eddie Duchin's show sizes up to be a mighty pleasant interlude these summer afternoons when it's heard over most of these same ABC stations. The Private Lives of Ethel and Albert come to you each weekday at this same time. The show is written by Peg Lynch, who plays the part of Ethel. Albert is played by Alan Bunce. The program is produced by Bob Cotton. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.